Good afternoon, YouTube. My name is Brandon, and today we've got a full packed episode, so stick around. All right, guys, so now I'm going to go over with you on how to mock up your axle, and this is super important, this part. So I'm going to go about it very much in detail, because if you get this wrong, this part wrong here, um, next to having good welds, this is, as far as I'm concerned, the most important part of this project. If your frame is square, or even if it's out a little bit, this part of the project, squaring up your axle, can fix that. It can take care of all of that. And that's what's important here, is that your axle tracks perfectly in line with your hitch. Because if it doesn't, it leads to all kinds of problems, especially with tandem trailers. Single axle trailers, not so much, uh, but it's going to lead to premature tire wear, and we don't want that. So the more time you spend on this step, the better overall in my opinion your trail is going to be. So let me bring you in and show you pretty much step by step how I go about doing this. So before I pulled off the axle I marked the axle center line and that's where I am right now I'm back on that axle center line. The rule of thumb with this that's worked well for me is that 60 percent of the trailer is ahead of you 40 percent is behind you. On tandem axle trailers, what I found works really well for me, and I've done it many times, is to take a bathroom scale, put the bathroom scale up under the hitch, and measure out 75 to 100 pounds of hitch weight. When your scale reads 75 to 100, you know you're good where you want to be, accounting in an empty trailer. Obviously, if you're going to put a toolbox on the front, all those other things need to be factored in. But on a tandem axle trailer, if you have between 75 and 100 pounds of hitch weight, that works out well. And you can determine that. You can set that. You can set that amount by sliding your axle back in front on the on the frame itself until you achieve that between 75 and 100 pounds. That's going to keep your trailer from wobbling behind you or swaying. I've established that my axle is doesn't have to be perfect as far as I'm concerned. I just know that more of the trailer is ahead of it than there is behind it. So I've got positive tongue weight. Now I've mocked up the hangers. Okay, Nothing is tight. I've just slid them through and the U-bolts aren't tight. You want to keep you want to be able to have a little bit of play so that these springs can move a little bit on this axle tube. Not a lot, but just a little so that if you bump them and you bang them with some pressure, you can you can move them. That matters. I've also done the same thing here, okay? Now, to get things rough, which is where you have to start, I would go I just take a common measurement and I do it off the front of the spring. So I'd go from here to the front of the trailer, take that measurement. Then come over to this side, do the same thing, measure it out to the front of the trailer, okay? Take a clamp, set it on each side. So now your axle is kinda close to where you think you want it, or where you think it should be, okay? So, does that make sense so far? So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take a measurement from your axle face to your frame. So you're measuring between the edge of here and here. I'm trying to do this with one hand and, and explain it. So you're measuring from the edge of here to the frame, okay? That's important that you get both sides at this stage perfect. They need to be reading the same exact thing. So if you've got a measurement of three and a half here, make sure it reads that three and a half there. And that may entail you sliding these hangers on the frame one way, one way or the other, okay? So let's assume now that you now have this axle in the frame perfectly left to right, okay? So this axle is centered evenly between the frame rails. Now what I do is make sure that this clamp on this side is super tight. That this is essentially locked down. And I would go as far as even spot welding this front bracket right here, just the spot weld, so you know that this is not gonna move front to back, okay? 
So now you've got a corner of the front part of the spring locked in, locked down. It cannot move, okay? Now, this is where this next step, you can fix any errors that you made in your frame. Now, we're not going to shoot to have any errors, obviously, but errors do happen. And if your frame's out of square, an eighth of an inch, uh, I mean, I would say even a quarter of an inch, you can fix it doing this, okay? But this is important that you do it this way. Okay, so now what you do is, remember this is pinned down, come off your spindle, okay, because that's going to be an accurate measurement with the tape measure. Let, actually, let's do it. Hook your tape measure on. Make sure you're hooking the tape measure the same way every time, okay? And then come up and measure to your hitch, okay? Pick a spot on the hitch. And that looks like I'm looking at 81 and 3 eighths, okay? So I've got 81 and 3 eighths from this side of the hitch to that spindle. Now you hook your tape measure the exact same way you did on the other side. It's important because we got to keep duplicating these measurements and you don't want to have a, an error in your measurement just because you hooked it wrong. And now we come over here and compare that measurement. And I am looking at 81, I hope you can see that, 81 and a quarter, okay? So it's between a quarter and three eighths. So that means that the trailer axle has to come ahead a sixteenth of an inch on this side, okay? So then what I would do is I would slide this bracket ahead, a sixteenth of an inch, reclamp it, and do this measurement all over again. Okay. The goal here is to verify and check over and over. Okay. So I would again recheck to make sure that the axle hasn't slid from side to side at all because there is a little bit of play here. You see the there is a little gap here in here, and that's okay. You want to try to set your spring so that it's pretty centered in your hanger. Uh, so s make sure your axle is perfect again, side to side from your frame. Go back and measure from the end of your spindle back to your hitch again, and do it there, and check that. If you get those measurements perfect all the way around, this trailer will be perfectly triangulated off the hitch, which means that the trailer tires are going to track perfectly in line with the tow vehicle. And that's what's important for longevity of your tires and for having a good stable trailer. I hope that made sense without a whole lot of rambling. It's, it's kind of complicated um, and it's very difficult to, to film it and video it and explain it as I'm doing it. So hopefully you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. Uh, but in short, spend a lot of time on this. If you're going to cut corners anywhere, don't cut them on this step because, you know, you're almost at the home run stages right now. You're at the point where you're so close to, to being able to tow this trailer. Just take the extra time and spend it doing your layout because it'll pay off in the long run and you'll be glad that you did. Um, you won't have a trailer that that goes down the road that does this number and fishtails and and whatnot. If you have any questions about any of that please just leave them down in the comments. Um, I'll be glad to answer them. Alright guys so I got this thing absolutely perfect. I mean perfect. Other than using a laser it's as good as I can get it. So I'm gonna go back through now and I'm gonna tack everything together, all my brackets in place, go back one more time, measure everything out, make sure nothing shifted or moved or warped, and once it's all good, I'm going to go back through and just pound the weld to it. So in case you guys are wondering what I use for wire, I'm using uh, Lincoln Electric Inner Shield. It's 30 thousandths flux coil wire. And obviously on a project like this, it's important. So don't waste your money on the, 
on the Harbor Freight wire. I've used it and it's, it's not worth it. If you're going to do something like this, spend the extra money and get the good wire, it's going to pay off in the long run. As far as I'm concerned, this stuff's the best. And I buy this wire. This is not given to me by anybody. Now it's super easy. Uh, clamp your back hangers down right where they fall. The only thing you need to make sure of is that this bar is not vertical. This isn't overly critical, uh, just as long as it's beyond vertical by a little bit. Now that I have this bracket welded on, what I'll do is just measure between the front of this tab to the back of that tab, record that measurement, then go to the other side and make that exact. Measure off the front hanger to the back tab, make it the same measurement as this, and weld that one in place. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a long day. I'm super hungry. I got the grill fired up in the back and I'm going to have some pizzas on the grill with some jalapenos. Take care guys. Come on.